The invasion-oriented war initiated by Russia in Ukraine increases hatred against Russia while fueling sympathy and support for the Ukrainian people and army. The resistance of Ukraine against the Russian army is increasing day by day and the world's second largest army continues to suffer heavy losses. Although Russia increases its attacks on Ukraine day by day and sends additional troops and artillery to Donbass and even launches airstrikes with cruise missiles, it cannot achieve success because now the Ukrainian armed forces are much more organized, much more experienced and able to successfully use Western weapons that can crush Russian weapons against the Russian forces. The Ukrainian army is now breaking new records every day in destroying Russian military equipment and weapons. This week, Ukraine's brave marine forces have set a new record with great success in the face of Russian attacks. Ukrainian marines successfully shot down six cruise missiles fired at western cities of Ukraine by the Russian Navy in the Black Sea within 24 hours. This was the record for the most cruise missiles shot down by the Ukrainian armed forces. In one day, the Ukrainian Navy officially announced that the Ukrainian Marines shot down six cruise missiles sent from the Black Sea over the cities of Mykolaiv and Odessa. Ukrainian Marines used anti-aircraft, artillery and portable anti-aircraft missile systems mounted on shore masts and ships to shoot down Russian cruise missiles. With this move, caliber cruise missiles launched from Russian submarines were prevented from beating the cities of Ukraine. At the same time, according to the statement made by the Air Force Command in the region, X-101 or X-555 cruise missiles fired from Russian 295s over the Caspian Sea were also shot down. The previous record of mass destruction of Russian cruise missiles belongs to May 22. At that time, the Ukrainian armed forces had a great success in the region by intercepting four Russian cruise missiles. It was announced that one of these four missiles was shot down by portable anti-aircraft missiles and the other three by the air defense system. Volodymyr Zelensky, on the other hand, said in his latest statements that, as of June 4, Russia had launched 2,503 rockets into Ukraine. This incredibly high number is actually the basis of Russia's attack strategy. Russian warplanes have been continuing their attacks, using both guided and unguided missiles, especially in the east, and damaged the civilian infrastructures of Ukraine. The main purpose of these attacks is to clear the way for the Russian army, which has failed in the ground operation, and to enable it to move more easily in the regions. At the same time, the main purpose of Russia which targets cities neighboring Eastern Europe, such as Odessa and Lviv with cruise missiles, is to keep a significant part of the Ukrainian army in the west. By increasing the losses in the West and to reduce the density of shipments to eastern Ukraine, however, the siege of Kiev showed us that, while the Russian infantry and tank troops who thought that the targets had been hit after the heavy bombardments were advancing towards Kiev, it was understood that the defense line of Ukraine stood where it was and was definitely not destroyed. This caused the tanks and soldiers of the Russian army to turn the Kiev and Chernihiv regions into a cemetery. We are talking about a cemetery made of rusty steel of the Russian army. The fact that the Ukrainian armed forces has been able to deal with these missiles in the last period should also have broken the Russian army's insistence on this strategy. That Putin, who makes it his motto to insist on any strategic mistake, never gives up on this strategy. Missiles fired by the Russian army only harm civilians and civilian infrastructures in Ukraine. The Ukrainian armed forces, on the other hand, manages to successfully evade these attacks and remain a strong resistor against the Russian army. Putin's faith in the air campaign must be completely broken because the Russian air force's performance in the air war in Ukraine is a complete failure. Russia has fired more missiles in Ukraine since the Second World War than has been fired by any country anywhere. This is a record for Moscow, and the Russian army is breaking this record every day and carrying out more attacks every day, but the Ukrainian armed forces are no longer afraid of Russian cruise missiles and are destroying them more and more every day. Breaking new records of achievements that the bombing campaign did little to win Putin's war and revealed important lessons about the future of war. The ineffectiveness of the Russian air force in the Ukrainian airspace should also be mentioned as an important part of this lesson. In an environment where Russia is breaking new world records in missile attacks, the shooting down of more than 200 Russian warplanes by the Ukrainian armed forces was a sign of a very humiliating situation for Russia. Considering that the Russian air force is 15 times larger than the Ukrainian air force, these figures bring a much more frightening scenario for Russia. 
Commenting on this situation, experts praise the Ukrainian armed forces while pointing out Russia's failure to take advantage of its overwhelming numerical advantage, Moscow's misstep in not establishing air superiority over Ukraine and Russia's reduced supply of precision-guided weapons. Whatever happens, it seems that Russia has not been making an effort lately to destroy the Ukrainian air defense systems that it tried in the first days of the occupation. This means that the Russian Air Force has not taken the necessary steps to maintain air superiority in the region. There is a very obvious reason for this. With the first light of February 24, the Russian Air Force attacked the Ukrainian air defense systems and announced that they had neutralized all of these systems. According to the statements made by Russia, the air defense systems in Ukraine were now neutralized, leaving the air superiority completely to Russia. However, in the following days, it was realized that this was not the case and the efforts of the Russian Air Force were observed to be in vain, with the increase in the military arsenal of the Ukrainian armed forces. The Stinger portable air defense systems transferred to Ukraine in the later days of the war. The necessity of these operations by Russia became more questionable, even if the fixed air defense systems were destroyed by the Russian Air Force. Ukraine had a sufficient number of portable air defense systems and these air defense systems could take on tasks at least as impressive as the fixed air defense systems in the hands of Ukraine. These portable air defense systems, launched from the ground to the air, once tried to oppose the U.S. Air Force in the U.S. operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. However, the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Army found a solution in this regard. The US Army used stingers and airborne attacks to protect its own army and marched to victory by blinding the air defense systems in Iraq. But Russia's failure to follow this path has become a key feature of the Ukraine war, confusing Western observers. After 48 hours of attacks on the Ukrainian air defense in the opening salvo of the war, Moscow seemed to have given up on maintaining this American war precondition in Kiev. The stingers were divided among the soldiers very quickly and the stingers created the so-called poor man's supremacy. The seemingly weak Ukrainian air defense has become a nightmare for Russian warplanes in Kiev. Putin had to face a great disappointment. He could not get efficiency from the steel piles. He trusted neither on land nor in the air in Ukraine, and he lost the advantage at the point where this war has come. It has begun to be interpreted as Putin's wrong strategy. The war is now thought to have turned into a war of passion between Putin and Ukraine. Putin will not be able to restore the lust reputation of Russia and himself for now. His only aim seems to be to win a victory that will strengthen his hand in the upcoming elections and to strengthen his own authoritarianism with its propaganda. No one can predict the outcome of this right now. However, the Ukrainian army, with its advanced Western weapons, can destroy Russian military equipment both in the air and on the ground. We hope that Ukraine regains its territorial integrity and freedom as soon as possible.